Hello and welcome to Apex Instant Tips, episode number 148, brought to you live most Fridays at 12.05 Eastern Time. We're your hosts. I'm Anton. And I'm Marwa. Great to see you again, Marwa. Great to see you too, Anton. Uh, so last week we talked about um, calling Ajax callback, invoking Ajax callback processes, and I promised that I would publish a blog post on that. I have, if you go to, out to apexdebug.com, you can get that blog post and you can have the plugin that we created. Um, so we are, um, we're doing great. We have we're our We're doing our great. Yes, so. we have our plugin. And now that we made it easier for developers to invoke Ajax um, callbacks, I think we need to talk about security concerns that we might face, right? That's right. Absolutely. I think uh, anytime you're using any kind of server side um, processing in, in from an Ajax call, you you no longer get some of the features that you would get otherwise from uh, from from uh, the Apex engine. Uh, and so we have to be really concerned about those. Um, uh, so, uh, Marwa, let me before. Hello. Um, so before we before we turn on our timer, let's just go ahead and describe the problem a little bit, um, and then then we'll turn on the timer and talk about about the solution. Um, yes. So I'll go ahead and share my screen. Um, and what we have here is this is the same report we showed yesterday. And if we click on um, if we click on Miller here, I can give Miller a ten percent raise. And there we go. It was given a ten percent raise, and we can see there it happened right there. I can click on this one, give that a 10% raise, and it's working exactly as we would like. Uh, the challenge becomes this. This page has on it a, um, a where clause in here. If we take a look, we can find this where clause. I don't see the president out here. We do have a president of the com company. If I, if I search right here, we can see the president's ID is 7839. Um, but in our screen, that president record does not show up. Right. I shouldn't be able to give the president a raise then, right? Yes. Ah, but the thing is this, if you, um, if you just inspect this item, you can see exactly I'm passing it right here. If I simply edit this attribute and change the ID from 78, change the ID from 787698, and put in the president's ID, and the president's name is King. Uh, let's see what happens. Um, I'll put that in there. I'll click here, and King given a 10% 10, 10 raise. So um, that's a problem. That's a problem. And I think this is why developers should never blindly trust user inputs. This These inputs should be somewhat validated or evaluated. Right, so let's kick, on the, kick off the timer and talk about how we'll solve for this security concern. What do you have for me? Yes, yeah, so there are different approaches for that. One of the approach is to take that ID of the employer and based on that ID, we can select the job from the EMP table and we can see if the job is the president. If not, we can raise an exception in our process. Right, so we have to do this in the actual Ajax callback. I'm going to let you walk through it one more time. We're in the Ajax callback, and what we'll do is um, we'll use this right here, this code. And walk me through once again, what does it do? Yes, we are selecting the job from the EMP table based on the EMP ID that we have from the user input, and we are evaluating that job, if it is a president or not. If it is a president, then we are raising an exception. And if you go, if you go down, please, you can see in the exception section, we are returning a text message saying that this is an unvalid employee. And actually, this is going to be treated as an error because the way that we developed our plugin is that it is expecting for a success message for the JSON object to have the key message. If not, it will be an error. Great. So what will happen is because we don't have a JSON element of message, we just have this, this will show up as an error. Well, let's give it a try. Um, so I'm going to say OK to that. I'll save this page. And I'm just going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to come out here. Uh, I'll inspect this element. I will change 7689 to be 7839. 
say okay to that. And now when I click here, I have invalid employee. Exactly. And okay. I'm sure that you well, have another way to do this. Well, I do. Um, and I'm not sure that my other way is better, but it, it's really just a, sort of an exercise in, well, how does Apex handle this? And what Apex does is anytime you have a page and they don't want you to tamper with something on that page. So in this example, they don't want you to tamper with the empno. That will be a hidden item. And so if we take a look and inspect this page, we're going to have an, a hidden item uh, that's called empno right here. We can see it. And it's a little hard to see on my screen, but there's this additional line data for P2 empno, and that has a checksum. And if you try to change this, if I change this empno to something else, seven, eight, three, nine, if I make that change and then I hit apply changes, we'll get a checksum error. So session tape protection violation. Um, and I'll just show in the um, really quickly, if we take a look at this item, um, you'll see the empno has on it value protected. So that value protected is what's what's causing this. So we can take a similar approach on our page if we want. Instead of taking the approach that, that you took, um, what we can do is we can associate a checksum with our column. So I've added, I created a function, and we'll talk, talk about a little bit about this function afterwards, but I've created a function called AIT get checksum that creates a checksum for this. You can see I pass in a salt that's unique. So every session, the person will get a different value, but, um, but we'll talk about that function a little bit later. And then I pass that back along in my, uh, in my JSON here, I'm passing the checksum as well. So then um, in my in my dynamic action, uh, I will also have to pass that checksum. So here we've got our checksum. I'm gonna pass the checksum as X02 right here. That all gets passed back to our give raise. Again, all of this has to happen inside. The key is it does have to happen inside your Apex uh, callback process. But all I do now is instead of option one, I'm using option two. I get the, I get the checksum of what was passed in so I'm getting the checksum of GX01, and I'm checking to see if the checksum of GX01, the newly calculated one, is the same as the checksum before. And then if it's not, I raise invalid employee just like you did previously. So if we do this, we'll have the exact same result. I'll say, okay, we'll save that, and we'll get precisely the same result. Now, is one way better than the other? Um, so this, we got the same result, invalid employee. I don't know that one way is better than the other, but there are two different approaches to, to doing the same kind of thing. Um, I'm gonna highlight one more thing. We talked something similar in episode 56 of um, Apex Instant Tips. Um, episode 56 was about uh, select lists um, and that's, uh, that's still a relevant one. So if you haven't, if you haven't uh, watched episode 56, I recommend you do that as well. Um, yes. So there we are. We had three seconds left. Those that's the solution. Yes. Um, so uh, if you just came in for that much of the tip, uh, do all the things like subscribe, all that kind of stuff. But uh, I have um, a little bit of a wisdom of the week and I'll talk a little bit more about um, I'll talk a little bit more about that. The checksum function that I created and um, and the Apex idea that I created associated with last week's. So, um, so first, uh, I'll do this completely in reverse order. Uh, last week's uh, Apex idea, I created an idea that said, hey, instead of us publishing this pl plugin, it should be native to the Apex uh, engine to invoke an Ajax server callback. Um, that way people don't have to download our plugin they can just use that natively. Um, and I already got a response back um, really quickly wow. from Vincent Morneau, um, which I was really pleased to get a response back. Uh, and the response was, we're not gonna do it. <laughs> but it was a little bit more than that. Um, the response was that they they wanna re-architect the way Ajax server callbacks happen all together so that they have better ways of, of um, dealing with this. Right now, when you do an Ajax server callback, uh, or Ajax callback process, uh, you can't do validations, you can't do any of the kinds of things that you can do when you submit the page in. Uh, so it sounds like they're going to give us a, a lot a lot more features uh, related to that. Um, so keep your eyes open for a, 
uh, for new features in this space uh, in upcoming releases. It's exciting uh, news. Yeah, they will yeah. be exciting news. Yeah. Until then, though, you can use our plugin, um, and you can find it at apexdebug.com and on my GitHub. Um, part two of the wisdom of the week. Um, I actually said I was going to do three things. I had one. Oh, I. Uh, oh, yes. Part two. Let's talk a little bit about this function that I created for creating a checksum and things that you might want to think about when you're creating a checksum. So I'll go ahead, I'll share my screen again, and I'll show you what, I do, what I'm doing for a checksum. So this is my function. It is uh, get AIT get checksum. I'm having the user pass in three things. A name, it doesn't really matter what you put in the name, a value, and a salt. Now, the, the thing is, you don't want the user to be able to scrub through your application and figure out that, oh, this checksum, the, the checksum of the number 5839 is always a particular thing. That's why for every place you use it, you want to use a different name. So if you use it in this region, you should call it something specific to this region. If you're using it on a different page, you should do it on a different page. So the name should be different every single time. And then the value, so let's say it's 5839. And then you also want it to be different every single session. You don't want this checksum to be reused across sessions um, because people could potentially, you could find it on your session and, and pass it along. So I create, um, so you pass in a salt. The salt that I've done is I've created an application item. Um, so when we look at when we look at the actual page and I make use of this, you can see I'm passing in GC salt. So right at the point that a user logs in and gets a new session, as soon as they get a new session, I created a shared component and application item. That's the G, the um, the CS salt. So check some salt. Uh, and I created a computation for that. And the computation is just, I use DBMS random to get a random value to put in uh, to put in there. So it's just a 10 character long string because it doesn't really matter. Um, uh, uh, oh, I mean, we have the checksum function. Absolutely, I will put the checksum function out on Git, GitLab, GitHub as well. Um, I'll show it again. It's not a lot here. I'm using Aura hash. Now, I'm using Aura hash. It's not the best choice, uh, but it's really in my mind, it's good enough. Um, Aura hash will give you a, a, a number. It's not a really big long number. It's not you know a whole bunch of characters, but it's going to it's going to be you know hard for somebody to just guess. Right? They're going to have to guess a, a many millions of guesses to get to it. Um, the reason I chose Aura hash is it's available without any extra privileges. You're going to be able to use it on apex.oracle.com or anything else you, you might use. But DBMS crypto dot hash would give you the possibility of having a much longer hash, a much longer uh, kind of element there. Um, but this is the uh, um, this is it. Ah, Taylor Smith, what's the cool vest for? Oh, I'm going to I'll I'll definitely come back to that. Um, but uh, so so here we go. The or that's that's the function here. Um, and then uh, I will um, I'll, I will talk about the best. Uh, but the last thing, Marwa, is the real wisdom of the week is just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. Right. That's we do this all the time. You and I, when we're looking at things, we right click on the page and we inspect the page. Right. Anything a user sees in here, they can change. They can just change exactly. it. So, yeah, if you're not, and not just this, they can change all. They can change all of the JavaScript as well. If I view the page source, any JavaScript on this page, I can just go in and change it, and I can change it, and then it'll do whatever I want. So, so exactly. Yeah. Now I'm seeing after this tip, I'm seeing things differently and I'm seeing things that I I was not used to see them or think about them in my mind at the first hint. So yes, we have to be careful. Right. So for example, if you saw this apply change button right here at the bottom, if you saw that ch apply change button and it was grayed out, um, what what would you think previous to this tip? 
well that is disabled actually and uh, impossible to enable it and well yes. at first but Two. then you yes. would think you would think you can't click it right i can't yes right but i would think oh i wonder how i can make that button clickable <laughs> and exactly and that's why we developers we need to be careful and think all about these security concerns right right every time you see something disabled or you don't see something but you know it's there you you should be thinking how how can i make this thing how could i do this how could i get around this um yes so uh um yes so i will say um when i was in eighth grade i uh, i published my first hacking application so um, wow yes <laughs> Um, all right, final thing, the Apex Vest. Here we go. Look at this. It doesn't get better than this. If you're an Oracle Ace from way back in the day, you got this. It says Oracle Ace Director on it. Um, I leave this back here. I think that they call this a flex. That's what the kids would call this. Are you familiar with that term, Marwa? Yes, and yeah. it's really, really nice cool vest really. <laughs> well it that big ace was a bit of a uh, a bit of a uh, we, we all had a lot of fun with it let me say that um so uh wow i think uh folks have wasted a perfectly good 17 minutes with us today a long uh a long episode um but uh thank you everyone marwa thanks again for um the plugin itself and uh Thank you we'll for you the week. second day. Yes, see you next week. All right. Do all the things, everyone. Like, uh, hit the splat, send your mom a letter about the show, make sure she sees it. <laughs>